Some of my favorite sketch comedy shows are In Living Color, Saturday Night Live, The Chappelle Show. It's something about watching people imitate other people that is hilarious to me. Um, when I first saw Sky Townsend, she was imitating Beyonce doing scoop videos, uh, like the Crazy in Love video, Beyonce interviews, um, singing Beyonce songs in like a different rendition. It was hilarious. But I tell you, like, I couldn't stop watching it after my brother introduced me to these videos. I would not be lying. <laughs> so now that I see that Sky Townsend is on a new show called A Black Lady Sketch Show, which is executive produced and co-written by, by Issa Rae, who we know from HBO's Insecure, which also had a amazing run on cable television. I was excited. It was, it was this person who I had gravitated towards at one point on another platform. Little did I know the struggles that happen between those things. So there's a story behind Sky Townsend when she could have easily been put on by her father, Robert Townsend, who was an amazing director. She took an opposite route and wanted to go to acting classes, audition on her own and make it her own way. The road less traveled is typically bumpy and Sky found that out. However, she persevered and she is now on television with a billboard on Sunset Boulevard. I wanted to talk to her, find out how that feels, talk about that journey because that's always important. And let's talk about this new sketch comedy show and where this comedic talent came from. So as always, you guys sit back, relax, and chill out. Welcome to Swap Sessions with Sky Townsend. Before we get started we definitely got to take care of the business and the bills so make sure you guys are subscribing make sure you are liking the videos make sure you turn your notification buttons on so that you can see when we have new stuff coming up drop us some comments let us know what you think about the interviews what you think about the people that we're interviewing who you want us to interview critiques all that great stuff drop them in the comments we'll definitely respond to all of them last but not least share 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 this with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your followers, share it with your networks. Um, we're growing on this thing right now. I'm very excited about where this is going. And I would love to take it further, but we definitely have to make sure we get it in the right hands and get the right people to start seeing it. So do all those things. Visit our website, www.swab.com. You'll see our full interviews in there, things that are not on video that we have, um, maybe some audio stuff. We have our podcast as well. You can check that out on all platforms. It's called Swap Sessions. And we have our digital application for mobile. So make sure you check that out for both Android and Apple. So connect with us. That's the goal, man. Let us let us know what you think about everything and make sure we're on the right path and giving you guys what you want to read and what you want to hear and see. All right. So that said, let's get to it. What was childhood like for you? I think I, most people would just think that, you know, Robert Townsend's daughter, we know what your childhood is. What was, what was your childhood? You know, my childhood was really um, creative. I was allowed to explore all of the things that I was into without feeling like I was changing my mind too much or that I didn't know who I was. My dad was like, spread your wings. You know, he was like this free spirited hippie who, you know, wanted us <laughs> so badly to, to try new things. And so um, I always say I wasn't amazing at entertaining as a kid, but I was encouraged. So it was like, I don't know if God was like, she wants it bad enough, give her the talent. <laughs> but I, you know, I couldn't really sing, sing as a kid, but I, I had all of this passion to entertain. And so that was always encouraged, but you know, my childhood was, was pretty regular. I had chores, I got spankings, I had, you know, responsibilities. I didn't get an allowance. It was really understanding the, the the power of hard work and him saying, if you want to be an entertainer, this is what it looks like. And so yeah. it was amazing growing up on sets because I got a firsthand look at what it really required to, to do what I wanted to do. So um, there was never really pulling back the curtain on Hollywood for me. I always saw, oh, this is what it's really like when you make a movie, you know? Um, yeah. But yes, growing up, um, I saw it firsthand. I loved it, but I knew that 
Knowing that I was a celebrity kid, I didn't want to jump hurdles and cut the line because I hated seeing that. Like, I hated seeing my friends who were not qualified put in positions that they didn't deserve. It really just bothered me. I was like, <laughs> you are not talented enough to be doing this. And I never <laughs> wanted, you know, people to be able to take that from me. So yeah. with knowing that at 14, I told my dad, I was like, stay out of it. I need to be the one, you know, to start my own career. And so that's what made me start doing videos online because I said, I need to get somebody's attention somehow. So maybe I'll just put myself out there. And then um, from that, I started kind of building my own audience. And, and from that, I then got an agent. And I started auditioning and doing the process just like a normal actor. I I got, I think, 600 auditions before booking a Black Lady Sketch Show. And I only booked four or five. So, so it was 10 wow. years. Yeah, 10 years of actively auditioning. And I think the most beautiful part has been with everybody celebrating these wins with me, they all have said, you earned it. You know, nobody said, oh, you're his daughter or, oh, he did that. They're like, no, no, no. We've seen yeah. her hustle for a decade. You know, she really earned it. So, so when you're, because when you're when you are a child, and again, that is your your atmosphere. Yeah. Um, what were what were your hobbies like outside of being on set? Like, what did you like to do outside of acting? Yeah, I loved anything creative, making jewelry or painting or even now I still do visual arts but um, I loved anything that I could get my hands on and felt like a craft um, so it was really interesting because I just I had to keep busy all the time yeah. and because I had so many hobbies as a little girl now as an adult I really am able to be my own team because I learned how to edit videos I learned how to do makeup and hair and braiding and whatever so I learned how to really just be my own squad when I couldn't afford it yeah no everybody says like you need to learn how to do this on your own quickly Everything. Because yeah. the moment somebody doesn't show up and you don't have it done, it's like look down to hair and makeup. <laughs> if you have a six a.m. Uh, you know interview, you got to know how to do it all. So yeah, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. All right. So when you when you go through this process, a hundred auditions, um, that's a lot of no. Six hundred. Yeah. Six hundred. Yeah. It's a lot of no. Like that's 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 a lot of either no or no answer or no comment or no thank you or you were great but mm, maybe next time yeah it's that builds your resilience um and it builds your for some people it tears up self-esteem and then for people that make it it completely enhances it what was it like going through that and how did you stay motivated motivated how did you continue pushing for what you want yeah well, a great quality about me is I'm really delusional. So I was like, I was like, you said no? Oh, right, right, right. I'll see you in a week on set. <laughs> yeah, I'm so delusional. Said so, so no, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll right. take that dressing room. That was so cool. silly. Yeah. That's fine. But, um, <laughs> No. <laughs> there were um, right. There were a lot of times that it ate at me, you know, because it's it's I'm very um I'm logical. I'm a dreamer, but I'm very logical and I understand when I don't make sense for something. I'm not the actress who's like, she took that part for me. I go, oh she I get it. Duh, that makes yeah. sense. So for me though, you know, there were moments it weighed on my self-esteem, but you know, I, I always discuss how difficult it is to get in the position of almost, right? Like we yeah. always discuss no, and no yeah. hurt, but no, you're not even a contender. Almost when it goes, all right, it's between you and her, this could change your life overnight. You could go from making zero dollars to 400K overnight, and then you, you know, right it's like, oh, almost is a really, it, it's a really painful place to, to exist. And I was in almost land, for years. So yeah. for me, it weighed on me because I'm like, when is somebody gonna give me a shot if I keep almost getting there? But in the same, what you don't realize the entire time is you're building allies that you had no clue. So there might have been a casting director, you know, who loved you and you just were too tall for the part or too young for the part. That was always it for me. I was too young all the time. Yeah. And eventually a role comes around and they go, Sky. And so it was beautiful because I built so many allies throughout those years, you know, with my delusion. Um, and then eventually, you know, it added up to where, you know, preparation meets opportunity and you're like, here we are, you know? You know, and it's funny that you say it because I, 
I tell people, I, I celebrate everything. If you call me and say, hey, we're thinking about, I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go pop something. And it's just, I'm, I'm happy to be recognized or even thought of when it comes to something that somebody's doing. And I tell people it's the same way if you get nominated for a Grammy or an Emmy or an or Oscar, that becomes a part of your resume. It's like Emmy nominated. So why can't you consider yourself privileged enough when you get the opportunities to go through doors? Just being in the room. Just being in the room and getting like, the shot. Be happy for it. If you don't get it, it's like celebrate that. Like I made yeah. it to the top three for this audition and exactly four or five thousand people were auditioning yeah that's how you have to look at it so that you don't quit because if you focus on rejection you will give up on yourself you know there were moments yeah. when i took a break from it because i was like this is never gonna happen and then you pick yourself back up and, and you go back into it and you celebrate you're like at least i got to try you know yeah so your your first role the first time you went out and landed a gig what did you do which which um project was it what was the celebration like was there a celebration? Yeah. So I think my first small project was a web series for BET um, that I booked when I was 17. But it wasn't that like audition process because I had so much material online. The writer reached out and said, would you be down to play? Right. So it was exciting, but I didn't I didn't earn it, earn it. It was more of yeah. a collaboration. Um, but the first big project that I booked uh, before this show was a show on Fox. Well, now it's on Netflix called Lucifer. And um, I went in for the audition and all of the girls were, you know, blonde haired white girls. And I was like, well, clearly I'm not what they're looking for, right? I'm, like, I'm in the wrong room. So, clearly you know? it's not me. <laughs> and, and, and you know, that was what they were seeking for the part. And that's okay, that was what they had in mind. But you know, the casting director was willing to see me. I went in, I played a pop singer and she goes, you know, we thought we wanted the character to be like Britney Spears. And then you brought in something like Beyonce and it shifted everything. And that lesson for me was sometimes you can show people what they don't know they're looking for. Yeah. You know? And that yeah. celebration was, cause I doubted it. I walked in the room and I said, there's no way this is what they're looking for and that's okay. Um, but that was really exciting because I got to play a singer. And then when I booked the show, they used two of my original songs for the character. And so I was like, this is amazing. Wow. Like, this is <laughs> like that's me on the screen and that's me that you hear. Yeah, I'm like, y'all hear that? <laughs> oh, welcome. <laughs> that, no, that's really me. That's, that's exactly. there's no ad libs. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. So, all right, you, you get to that point. And it's, I'm, I'm still at 600, like for whatever reason. Like, that's <laughs> just, it's there. But it's, because I'm going to go back to that. You're, you're, auditioning and auditioning and auditioning auditioning and it's not happening mm -hmm. is there a point where you think to yourself go down the hallway and just tell this man to make a phone call and then within that you still walk yourself back away from him and go no like yeah, how I... that has to be hard to know that the opportunity can be right there yeah yeah it, you know it's really funny I never mentally went there. I went to, can my team call them back and ask them for me to do it again? Or what did I do wrong? Like it never went, oh, let me just cut the line because I felt like something's not lining up for a reason, right? And it wasn't until two years ago that I got back into acting class because I got really complacent. I wasn't studying anymore. I just was like, I'm talented, right? And, okay. <laughs> and so um, I got back into acting class and that was, I think, a moment that a lot changed for me because I was picking the easiest scenes because I was auditioning and none of the people in the class were. So I was in this place of getting a little cocky because I had an agent. I was like, oh, this is just to make my agents happy when these are aspiring actors who haven't even gotten in a room and I've been in yeah. 600. So I'm yeah. picking the easiest sides. You know, I don't want to put any, any work. And I remember I heard one of the guys in the class who was trying to get an agent. He'd never really auditioned for real. He said, can you give me the hardest piece? And I was like, and the teacher's like, okay, I have a seven page, it's like a monologue of um, a soldier talking about coming back from war. It's emotional, it's difficult, it's a play, so it's heavy dialogue. Do you want this? He said, absolutely. And I was like, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm doing two pages, you know. So I'm like, he's crazy. And he came to class in character, fully memorized. I barely knew my two pages. And that was the moment that I said, so many people want this more than you. Stop being lazy. 
you know? And in that moment, everything shifted because I humbled myself and realized I had become complacent and lazy and didn't know because I was still showing up. I was still yeah. doing the work, I was memorizing, but I stopped studying because I felt like I already had it in me. There's hungrier people out there who will take it from you. And I saw him and I go, wow, he cares about this class so much. He wants to do his best, you know? And and that really was when everything shifted for me. I took the class and I booked the show that same year. That, I mean, that, that will, for anyone, that's yeah. enough to be like, <laughs> today get on it like now. today yeah. because there we never think about that when we're in that moment of like achieving you never think that there's somebody who wants it more than you do and there's yeah. always someone who wants it more than you yeah like, and hard work beats talent when talent isn't working hard so look every time. somebody every in the time if you are lazy <laughs> yeah that's and that's really and i tell people like and that's the reason there's understudies like that understudy is waiting for you to mess up them up. Be like, please let her break a toe. Yeah. <laughs> like, please, car please. accident, please. <laughs> Delayed subway, <laughs> something. And it's like, you're just waiting for, you're waiting for that moment. And yeah. like when you're, when you're in the moment, you don't think about it that way. No. Cause you're, you're already there. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Black Lady Sketch Show. How yeah. did that happen? And how does it feel to be on a sketch show? Because I can only imagine. Yeah, it's, I mean, so I, the process was fairly quick. I submitted a self tape and the self tape basically requested three to five characters and a minute monologue of each of your own original characters. But of course I wanted it so bad. <laughs> that I submitted 11 characters because I'm like, oh, no. can I show you? Can I show you? So Just I in case you didn't like three, there's number yeah. eight. Right. And in case four doesn't work out too well, number 10 is dope. Right. So. She's solid. Yeah. You pick, so you pick your favorite five. <laughs> I did all of those. I'm like speaking in Spanish as a character. I sing at the end. Like, I'm like, I need y'all to see how bad I want this. So I get a call the day, the day later and they go, okay, um, you have an improv session tomorrow with the creator, uh, the head writer and casting. Uh, your audition, well, your follow-up audition will be you talking to yourself as uh, six different characters or eight different characters in one scene. I said, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Me talking to myself, they said, yeah. And one of them's from the Ukraine, one of them's on drugs, one of them's this, so I'm talking to myself in this scene. So I go, how much time do I have to prepare for this? They said, tomorrow morning. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I get to the call back, I'm panicking. Um, I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh. I go in the room, I give it my all. I just, you know, I leave it to God. And then a few days later, I'm grocery shopping, trying not to spend more than $17 because the debt was crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, grocery shopping and my agents call. And I'm like, hey, y'all, what's up? They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, you know, I'm just trying to buy some shrimp. What's up? They're like, HBO just called. I'm like, <laughs> in the middle of rocks, you know? So, um, <laughs> not in the middle of rocks. Look, it you guys. <laughs> when you got seventeen dollars to spend, is you find Trader Joe's, you get three bananas, <laughs> and it's yeah. like you start picking them off. And it's like I was like, I'll get a potato for dinner. Like you said, you said nineteen cents each, so <laughs> this is sixty cents. I'm counting. Yeah. No so then I was like, this. maybe I'll order some food tonight. This is great. They said you do that. <laughs> So that was how it, it worked. I submitted a tape. I went in to meet the creator and then I got the call that the offer came in. So it was fairly quick. That is dope. So were you, it's a being sketch comedy. Yeah. Did you always, did you always feel that you had a knack for comedy? Were you always a funny kid growing up? Yeah. I was, you know, I always joke and say, um, my dad was training me without my knowledge. Uh, I thought we were playing games. And no, they were <laughs> improv techniques. You know, and I, I always say my funniest story is we'd be on the way to school and he would challenge me to see how many characters I could squeeze in before we arrived to the carpool lane. So he'd be like, okay, okay, uh, caller number four is Bobby from Texas. And I'd be like, hey there, it's Bobby from Texas. And I'd go into <laughs> in and out of characters. He'd be like, oh, sorry, Bobby, I think uh, Myrna from London's here. I'm like, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm talking nice, Myrna. And I'd go back, <laughs> you know, to all of these people. And so I'm doing this at 10 years old, nine years 
old. Yeah. And so I remember, you know, he showed me a film from the 50s and he goes, watch this and then tell me what you think. I'm like, whatever. And he knew I had the bug, you know, he knew. So yeah. I'm like, okay. He goes, so what do you think of the movie? I'm like, well, it was kind of annoying how they were talking. You know, the little girl kept saying, you know, mother, tell me the truth. You didn't kill that boy. And he's like, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and he goes, <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> yeah, so I always could do voices, and my dad is a wizard at voices. He can do every voice in the book. Um, so I think genetically, it just, you know, I was the one who got it, but I never trained. I didn't go to improv school. I didn't study. I didn't go where the greats go. So I knew I was funny, but I was like, but I didn't, I, I'm not a comedian. I just, I make yeah. jokes. But sketch comedy is such a specific lane, you know, and it, and it's, it requires such a level of transformation that normal comedy doesn't. Normal comedy, you could just be funny and say lines like yourself. Sketch, you have to get your whole body engaged and completely transform every person. So it's- Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's crazy. And that's why 11 characters showed up on your audition team. Like- <laughs> that, that is just You were like, crazy. let's really see what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, y'all have no idea. I've been doing this for years. <laughs> Right. Like six. <laughs> the character I did when I was ten. Like, <laughs> You're like I'm Norma. <laughs> Don't right. try me. <laughs> I've been this girl. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I, I literally do this in the shower. Like you have no idea. I talk to myself as different people. <laughs> it's. Oh yeah. That's how I learned <laughs> how to interview. Was I would talk to myself in the mirror for hours, and I would just. It was really. I told you I'm sick. I'd be like, why do you do this? I'm like, that is a great question, you know? And I would <laughs> And here I am, you know? It's like, being sick in the head really takes you places, it does. It, it, it will take you very far. <laughs> Even if it's not in person, like it takes you very far. <laughs> but I, but maybe it's me. I love people who are a little sick in the head. It's, yeah. it's they make for great friends. Oh yeah. So it's great. yeah. Great. Always great. have a friend in me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now with let's call it newfound fame. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now with newfound Shall fame. <laughs> let, briefly, let's 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 look. We have to celebrate these moments. Right. Right. Newfound fame. Right. Yes. Newfound fame. Um. So. I would think, personally, for you, life doesn't change because this isn't a new atmosphere for you. This is something that you've grown up in. So life doesn't change. Do the people around you change? Are there people around you already adjusted to this as well? Ooh. Dang, out of all my interviews, nobody asked me this. Um, this is a great question. That's, that's what we do. No, you're killing it. This is this is really it's keeping me on my toes. I love it. Um, you know what's interesting is I feel like before um, a lot of people knew who I was through internet stuff, but I didn't feel like I had anything to respect. It was just oh she's funny or I like her videos. Like what is that? But now right. with me being on um, a major network such as HBO, there has been a shift where it's like oh you went from being like the girl that I think she has a funny video to a billboard on Sunset. It's kind of different now, you know. But in the same. I haven't really dealt with the adjustment yet because the world isn't fully open and I'm always in a mask. So I don't really know what that feels like yet. And I'm kind of very nervous about that because yeah. I, I love walking a lot. I'm always by myself. So I know that my life will have to shift in a lot of ways. Um, as far as the friends around me, um, I have wanted to change a lot of them with this just because I want to be around people who are growing. And even if you are going from being the you know new employee to the manager at Staples, I want you to have a goal. I can't be yeah. around anybody who, it doesn't matter what your goal is, I can't be around anybody who's going through the same stuff they were five years ago. And I think it's very easy to just get comfortable in your BS. And I just, I'm not in a space where I can be, you know, I always say it's, I hang out with people and it's wine and laughs for them and then a drain battery for me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of people who, it sounds very harsh that I'm okay never seeing again. And that That's is not harsh. a matter of, you know, it's not beef. It's just, it's almost like white noise. I just, I don't feel enough to do it again. And I know that I'm heading somewhere and I need all my friends to be doing that. 
you know, in, in whatever way. And so um, I, I have made the decision to cut a lot of people off because, you know, and of course that turns into your Hollywood. So it's a difficult transition, but it really is just, if, if I want better for you than you want for you, we have an issue. Because it becomes draining. It's, it's you're pouring into someone with a hole in the bottom of their cup. Like yeah. it, yeah. not, what not am help. I like what I'm, am I doing? I'm drained trying to fix your life. Yeah, <laughs> like that, I don't that, have the time. I don't have the time. You know, after a 16 hour work day, I don't have the time to answer the phone and you have the same problem you had six years ago that is fixable. Fixable. <laughs> Quit. Quit. Just why do you still work here? Break up. Quit. Fire them. Get rid of it. I don't know. But like, <laughs> what go. is the solution? You know? Your dog is going to continue pissing on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> going to since you got him it's not going to stop <laughs> you know i just i can't you buy can't. the couch yeah it's <laughs> what else do you want from me <laughs> see but when we blow up we're wrong <laughs> so right and then it becomes hollywood and you know and that's why i told a lot of friends i love you but i'm taking space because i love yeah. you but if this was me would you take space yeah so you understand yeah i i it's out of love but it's also out of if i'm screaming to an empty room and you're calling me for never-ending advice i don't have the time anymore before i had the time i was unemployed and struggling and we was all struggling i don't have the time now to answer it at, while i'm on set I don't, you know? So it's like everything has to feed you, whether it's your laughter, your joy, your inspiration, your stomach, shoot, cook me a meal. I don't know, but we have to do something, you know? So, <laughs> cook me a meal and then complain. Yeah, like, no empty so, gossip, no, you know, miserable energy. I just don't have the room. And you know, I think what happens is people get so comfortable in that, that they feel like it's normal. And I'm like, for instance, I'm like housewives. I, I have a love-hate relationship with these network yeah. shows. Yeah. But it's like, this is not normal. Like, you're not supposed to just be arguing with people all the time. Like, it, you shouldn't have reads and digs all the time. Like, something's wrong. Pouring and a drink on someone is not normal. <laughs> that's, no. Like, we don't do this. Like, what is the problem? And then the problem, people watch it, and then you say, oh, my, I'm I'm most like this person or this character, and now you're trying to portray that person in your real life. Stop! Right. Like, it's you dangerous. don't like this. It's, it's extremely dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Okay, that was my little rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now, what's what's next? What do you what do you aspire for? You know. It, people ask me this and I, I never really know fully how to answer because I'm still kind of processing what's going on now. But, you know, I was describing something to, um, I had another interview and I told them basically, I look at the boldness, the fearlessness, the uh, unapologetic nature of like Monique, Samore, Lunel, like the OGs back in the day. I look yeah. at the character work of Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, and I go, is there a way to blend these two worlds as a black woman? You know, and for me, I just, I, I so deeply admire uh, Jamie Foxx and, mm -hmm. and all these comedians who still are able to tap into music or character work and still do serious. I see that it's possible. And so my biggest goal is to be a really well-rounded entertainer, a really well-rounded entertainer who's clearly studied and, um, and just is, is creating stuff that feels good to me. You know, I, I ultimately want to get into writing and creating my own material, my own shows and movies. And that's the, the biggest goal because I have so many stories that only I could tell. Um, but yeah, in the same, I just want to have fun doing it. I have a lot of friends in the industry who don't enjoy it anymore. And so above yeah. anything, I want to enjoy it, you know, because after a sketch show, I had so much fun reporting to work. It was hard but I got to transform and challenge myself and it was a blast. So it really ultimately comes down to still enjoying it. And if I don't, I'm like, <laughs> I'm out. Like, so this was nice. <laughs> it was nice. I'm yeah. a girl. Absolutely. Go have fun. Congratulations on the next uh, season. I, I will not be there. Right. <laughs> so, I, I snuck into the last one. I'm not coming back. <laughs> like, yeah, if it's not fun, there's no point. There's no, no point. There's, yeah. there's nothing worse than being miserable going to work yeah like there's there's nothing worse than that that is yeah. it's a horrible feeling in the morning yeah so 
congratulations on enjoying what you do. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, it's called Unpack and Bounce Back. And it's not and, it's the letter N. So Unpack and Bounce Back. And uh, yeah, I started it over the pandemic with my cousin. And okay. it is the funniest, most, it's like deep, funny. It's really a lot to take in, but uh, we, we dropped it over the, the pandemic and Spotify put us on the Hall of Fame for best podcast 2020. And so we just dropped nice. a new skin. Um, and it's just, it's been really therapeutic, but I think I'm so proud of it. You know, it's like stand up and therapy in one place. It's just a really, it's a whirlwind, um, but I'm really proud of that. So the second season is now out of, of that on all streaming platforms, but that's besides that. That's dope. So it's like a dark comedy kind of thing. Yeah, we share our stories and I mean, we cry, we it just everything, but we go into basically all of the lessons we learned in young adulthood to try to help the listeners who are younger. So we tell what it's really like to go through a breakup or what it's really like to find out you got cheated on or to get rejected in your career or, you know, dealing with siblings. How do you find that balance when you can't see eye to eye? And, you know, we make it funny and digestible, but we talk about it. It gets very real, you know? <laughs> Nothing's better than the good sibling right? Oh like, just God. go on ahead and do this. Like, don't even call me for about a month. It's like, if you remember it like that, okay. <laughs> like, you talk to your sister? Nah. Right. We talk about it. Yeah, we go there. Yeah. Uh -uh. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> leave it alone. Just don't, don't, even, don't even do it. Right. Me and that boyfriend of hers do not get along. Oh, um, but... That's how it goes. But it's real, it's it's real life. And I think it, it helps people, again, understand that it's not just them. And if someone else sees their point of view that does not know them, it's like, yeah, I told you. Right, right. Your mom is crazy. Right. <laughs> like I said it. <laughs> this is not normal. She continues putting the Chinese containers that are metal in the microwave. Like, that's not okay. <laughs> so, not okay. Not okay. <laughs> right. Cool. Well, one again, congratulations. Um, this is exciting. And again, after after 600, you deserve it. So thank you so much. <laughs> you work for that. Like <laughs> that is that is work. Thank so, you. You deserve every moment of it.